My name is Mike Olson. I'm a uh, lead member of the technical staff here at Salesforce. Uh, I've been at Salesforce for about three years. Uh, I've been working in the software industry for a little over 20. Um, the sign-up team that I work on, responsible for many really neat products here at Salesforce, but the, uh, the ones we're going to focus on today are scratch orgs and the ability to import the shape of another org into these scratch orgs. But before we can get into that, of course, the safe harbor side. Please do not make any financial decisions based on what you see or hear in this presentation. I mean, seriously, folks, check out my portfolio, talk to my friends. You never want to buy something just because Mike said it's cool. Go to salesforce.com. That's the, the source of truth for the truth. So now out of the way, let's get into some of the good stuff. Uh, most of you should be familiar with Salesforce DX. And of course, the cornerstone for Salesforce DX is Scratch Orgs. Scratch Orgs allow you, the developer, to create and delete orgs, personal orgs, um, as needed. One of the huge benefits of Scratch Orgs is the ability to customize them to your needs. So as an example, say you need an enterprise edition org and you need to have person accounts on to do some testing. Not a problem. You make a few small changes to your configuration file and boom, there you go. You have an EE org with person accounts enabled that you can do your development against. But what if that's not enough? You know, what if you need to test against your production org? Or maybe one of your customers has an org that's giving your application problems. What you really need is a way to copy that shape of that org and put it in a scratch org for development and testing. As we will see, it becomes very difficult to just go through and enumerate all the features and preferences in your configuration file to exactly match that shape. As I said, you really need a way to copy all of that from one to the other. And that's what we'll be talking about today. But before we can actually talk about copying the shape, I should take a minute and talk about shape itself. If I asked each of you in the room to tell me what my shape is, I would probably get hundreds of different answers. You know, some of you would be very specific. He's six foot five, he's 200 pounds, he's got blue hair, blue eyes, but he's got a noticeable lack of hair. Others would be more vague. You know, he's tall, he's not too overweight, he's got lighter color eyes. And still others would kind of use more of a comparison approach. You know, he's got the devilish good looks that you often associate with a movie star. All of you would roughly describe my shape, and all of you would be right in some level or another. Salesforce orgs are much the same way. They can be described as, well, I got this enterprise edition, and it started as that, and then we turned on these features, and we definitely have Wave Council turned on, or maybe it was a professional edition, and we did this stuff. And, and really, the truth is, you know, many of these orgs have been around for forever, and no one really knows you know, what they started as, um, what has been augmented in them, you know, what has been disabled, what has been enabled, what kind of customizations are there, even the admins don't really know what's going on there. Someone once told me an org is like a happy soup. You've got your data, you have your customizations, you've got some Apex stuff, you've got visual force pages, lightning custom components, there are preferences that have been enabled or been disabled, there's permissions and org values, all these things that we call settings. You know, there's setup data, maybe you have some sandboxes, maybe you have some trial force templates. All these things define an org, and all are extremely useful to the functionality of the org, but not all of them really make up the shape of that org. When you remove the data, when you remove the metadata, the setup data from an org, what we have left is distilled down to the shape of an org. This leaves us with things that you know, org admins have done. They've gone into the setup menu, they've changed preferences, they've changed different configuration data. It leaves us with permissions and limits, things that came with your uh, addition when you purchased it, or maybe you got them in add-ons, or maybe you called up Salesforce support and they, they flipped some switches for you. It also leaves us with things that we consider the user shape. Maybe you have custom permission sets, custom profiles, and things like that. All of these different tweaks, and there are about 2,000 of them that are possible on any given org, are what define the org shape. So now we can start to see why using that declarative approach of listing out all the different features and all the different preferences can become impossible. Again, what we really need is a way to capture all of these settings and apply them to your scratch org when you create it. Which brings us to the shape export and import pilot. Uh, so before I go into a demo, which I want to demo all this really cool stuff to you guys, uh, I'd like to take a moment. I'll explain kind of an overview of how it works. 
Um, and before that, though, I've got a really big disclaimer. So the shape import and export is a closed pilot. So I know all of you are going to leave this presentation, and you're going to go run out, and you're going to log into your orgs, and you're going to try to use all this stuff, but you can't. You have to go register for the pilot first. Uh, the pilot program here at Salesforce allows us to get really valuable feedback from all of you, tell us what we did right, tell us what we did wrong, and then we incorporate that into the development process. And in the end, we hope that we can give you a product that is actually useful. It's something that you all need. So please, go register for the pilot, give us the lowdown, give us the good, the bad, the ugly. You're not going to hurt our feelings. Please, tell us what you think. So, on to the export and import. I talk about this as two separate processes because there's really two different roles that do this. Uh, in the demo, I'm going to do them as kind of two different people, but in reality, you know, it could be done in the same, as the same person, you know, if you have access to both of the, the orgs that are involved. The first of the processes is the source org export. It is performed in the org that is getting its shape exported. We call this org the source org. This process can be done by any admin or equivalent in that org. In this role, you will initialize a shape export. Basically, you will snapshot the current shape of an organization at that time using the command line interface. And then you will authorize a set of dev hubs to use that shape export. Yes, you have to authorize them. Access to the shape exports is restricted, and it can only be accessed by dev hubs that you have authorized. I mean, the shape export is like the soul of your org, right? A lot of these bits and bytes, you guys paid a lot of money to get turned on inside your org. You wouldn't want this stuff getting into just anybody's hands. The second process is done in the dev hub. This is done by any user that's allowed to create scratch orgs in your dev hub and by any dev hub that is allowed to access the shape export, like we just talked about that. Just a few small tweaks to your configuration file, and you can be importing the shape of a source org. If you look at the sample configuration file I have up there, you notice I removed the addition, and I replaced it with a new stanza called source org. That's really all that you need to do. Now, you might ask, why would I leave in the org preferences in the org features section? I mean, after all, I want a copy of my source org shape. I don't want a copy of my source org shape and person accounts. And I'd say, you're, you know, you're right. In 99% of the use cases, you would remove those because you just want the shape of the org. But I left them up there to show you that you can actually leave them in there. And then you'd ask, why would you want to do that? Well, let's say you've got a new feature you're looking to turn on, but you don't want to pull that big trigger in your production org. So what you can do is you can copy the shape of your production org, put it in a scratch org, and turn that feature on in the scratch org, and use it kind of as a testing ground or a playground to make sure that everything is working all right. All right, on to the demo. As I said, there are two main roles that we'll be doing in this demo. We have the source org and the dev hub. And to kind of keep things so that we're not super confused, I thought I would wear different hats to represent the different roles. So I have with me the ever-famous cheese hat. I will wear this when I'm doing the source org, so when I'm initiating the shape export and when I'm doing the authorization. I also have with me my favorite Green Bay Packers hat. If you can't tell, I'm from Wisconsin. Um, I, will use the, I will wear this when I'm doing the role as the dev hog. And lastly, one thing I wanted to show you is that shape exports are restricted. So I will do some commands as the ever-evil hacker who is trying to gain access to somebody's source export. And for that, I will wear my big butt hat because evil hackers are, well, I'll let you guys fill in the dots on that. With that, let's switch over to our terminal. Oh, this is going to be hard to see. Sorry. I have here, I'm connected to three different organizations in my terminal. I have, oh, come on. That is what I wanted to see. As you can see, I have the three different orgs that I'm connected to, and I gave them all aliases to represent the different roles that I will be playing. The first role we'll do is the source org. Uh, this terminal is connected. You see the dash U next to it is connected to the source org. The first thing that we would like to do is initiate an export of the shape. You do this with a subset of commands that are under the org shape.
There we go. Typing in front of people is hard, I'm sorry. <laughs> can't see what I'm doing wrong, Troy. Anyways, they're under the, sh the force org shape subcommand. Uh, there is a create, a list, and a delete command that are available to us. First of all, we would like to list the set of shapes that we have available to us. We will use force org shape list to see this, uh, which I'd already shown. The force org shape command lists all source orgs or orgs that we have shape exports available to us. You'll notice here that our source org already has one active shape export. This is important to know. Every source org is allowed at any given time to have one active export. If we would like to create a new one, we use the force shape create command. This will initiate capturing the shape of an org. So right now, we're going through, we're collecting all those bits and bytes, and we're putting it into a format that allows you to import it into a scratch org. If we go back and we do our list again, we see that we now have two entries for our source org. We have the original active one, and then we have one that is in progress. We will keep the active one active until the in progress one is complete. This is so that there's no hiccups. If you're using this in a CI process or something like that, you always have an active shape available. So while this is running, let's go take a look at our source org. I'm going to use the handy force org open command to bring this up into a new window. Here is our source org. Let's go look at a few things that I've, I've set up here in a source org, so just so we can see what's not going to be there and what will be there. If I go look at accounts, I have one test dummy account in here. This represents the data that is in our source org. So we have some data in there. Additionally, I can go and look at the setup menu. And I'll go over here and do a quick search for Apex. And notice that I have one, again, test dummy Apex class in there. Again, this represents our set of metadata that's there. And the last thing I want to show off is if we go and we look at the company profile of this org, and I edit the org, You'll notice that I have a feature turned on here called state and country pick list. This means that your country and state fields are not just text fields, but they're enumerated values. This is the feature that we would like copied as part of our shape export. So good. That is our source org. Let's go look and see how our create is going. We'll go back to our force org shape list command. And we list, and we notice we only have one active shape export. So we have completed our first step as the source org. We have created a brand new shape that has all that stuff inside of it. The last step that we have to do as the source org is we need to go and authorize a set of companies or a set of dev hubs to be able to do this. Again, under the setup menu, I will search for shape. And I notice I have org shape subscribers. Org shape subscribers are a list of org IDs that are allowed to use your source export. You'll notice that there is one in here already. We are, and this is the org ID of the source org. So we automatically allow a source org to access its own shape. But that's not what we want to do here. Today, we would actually like to have our dev hub do it. So we will scroll back up to our list of orgs. And I will snag the dev hub out of here. Go back in here. And save this. And there we go. We have now authorized that dev hub to use our shape export. And that's all we had to do for the source org. A lot of talking, but there are very, very, very few commands there. Now, let's see what we can do as our dev hub. We will switch over now to our dev hub terminal. We will notice that as the dev hub, we are connected uh, by default to the dev hub. That's the dash D there. So when we do commands in this terminal, we are doing them as the dev hub. If you would like to make a shape, you'll notice, like I had talked before, I have a configuration file already created here. 
And you'll notice it's a very simple one. I didn't do any of the features or the preferences. Just the name of the organization and the source org that we wanted to see. You see above that this is the source org we had before. Now, let's go ahead and create. We'll use the create command to go kick off with that configuration file. So now this is going out. This is creating us a brand new Scratch org. And that Scratch org then will get the shape export imported on top of, the, uh, on top of it. And let's hope that this finishes quickly. This is a live demo, so. There we go. We have successfully created a scratch org using that source org shape. So let's see if that's for, for real. Let's go open up our brand new scratch org. You notice I don't have to give it any commands. Ah, waiting for the, the lightning custom domain. Sorry, folks. This is, uh, this is one of the things, if you guys have used scratch orgs, you guys have all seen this before. Uh, unfortunately, it had to show up during the demo. Um, a lot of it is the, the drag of everything on Dreamforce. But this is a good time to point out one of the nice things about the DX command line. I mean, it's taking care of a bunch of this stuff for you. You know, it's, it's, you don't have to write all this custom logic to go wait and make sure that the, the Lightning domain is, is resolved and all the stuff like that. It's an issue that we know about. It's an issue that we're working on. Um, because of time, let's get back to this in just a second. We'll let it resolve itself, and then we'll come back and look at our, our, our scratch org if we have time. While we're waiting for that, let's jump over to the last little bit really quick. So we notice here, force org create came back and it said we're successful. Now we're going to go jump into our evil hacker terminal, which has the lovely matrix colors. If I do a, a look, I notice that this terminal has the exact same configuration as the dev hub. We're going to try to create a scratch org with the source. Now remember, we did not authorize this terminal to do that. So we're going to go be just like an evil hacker. And we are going to go over here, and we are going to steal the command that was used before, because that's what evil hackers do, is they steal things. And we'll go put it in here, and we'll kick off our force org create. And you'll notice here that it comes back and says you have an error. You're not authorized to do that. Again, we don't want people getting access to this stuff unless they can. Now, if enough time has come back, nah, it's going to do that. Sorry, folks. I was hoping to be able to show you the Scratch org. Um, it does have the, the shape copied for it. Uh, just as we said, you'll have to take my word for it. Or come see me afterwards, and I'll show you the demo. So let me get back over here. Come on. OK. So what did we just see? We saw that as the source org, um, I could fairly easily create a shape export. Again, all we used was the shape create command, and we used the shape list command to see what was there. We saw that we could use the setup menu then to authorize a set of dev hubs, uh, one or more, uh, to use our shape export. And then we saw as a dev hub that I could fairly easily change my configuration file, and I could create a scratch org using that shape. Then lastly, we saw that if I wasn't authorized, then you get an error message uh, saying you're not allowed to do that. So next steps. Um, you know, I squeezed a lot into this 20 minutes. Um, if you'd like to learn more about shape export uh, import, the best way to do it is give it a try. Um, there's a link in the resources page of this uh, for the pilot program. I encourage you to go check out the pilot program. Also, if you have more questions, I'll be around after the presentation. And also, right back over there in the developer forest, um, I and a whole bunch of really smart Salesforce DX people will be around that can answer your questions about shape and or anything else DX. Uh, and lastly, you know, go check out a bunch of the other sessions. There are a lot of great sessions here today. Check them out. Um, learn a whole bunch more stuff about Salesforce DX. As promised, here is the uh, resources section with the link. and. Um, that's it. Thank you very much. I will be down around here for any questions anybody might have. Thank you.